We do. Unfortunately, no. No, it's all good. I felt bad. I can pair it with a sweet cream. I probably ate it. Thank you. So tiny of me. Okay, now I can. I'm going to open us with um, Akina's Karakia, which is one that we use. We open and close um, our meetings with uh, Priya, a Priya in uh, Māori, and this is it here with the translation underneath. Whakataka te hao ki te uru, whakataka te hao ki te tonga, ki a mā ki na ki na ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai, i hi aki ana te atakura, hi tio, hi huka, hi hei honga, ti hei mori ora. Kia ora. So I um, am going to introduce myself and I will introduce Akina to you and we will do a bit of, I can never say this as word properly, whanangitanga, which is getting to know each other. And then Nick, who's sitting down the back here, is going to speak to you about the broad, deep work of the Akina Foundation. And we have David Morrison here, who's a real life entrepreneur running a real life social enterprise, who's going to talk to you about the wonderful work of Thank You Payroll. And then we'll have some work, uh, some time for chatting, uh, and questions and answers. So we're very excited to be hosting you. It's been, when we dug around in our, in our drive, um, a good four years, I think, since the group. Obviously a small matter of a pandemic in the middle there, since um, a group has come out on a study tour and you're the first that we've hosted uh, in a while, so it's, yeah, it's really exciting. Tina koutou, tina koutou, tina koutou, ka ko tangatikio, ti maunga, ko wakanai, ti awa, ko tangatitriti, ti iwi, ko bakmashin, ti whanau, no whanganui ataro o. Okay, uh, Akina Foundation, Ohi Mahi Ana, He Tumu Fakare Toku Tumu Mahi, uh, Ko Nikola Toku Inua. Lila, tina koto, tina koto, tina koto kato. So, what I have just told you is that my name is Nicola, uh, I work at the Akina Foundation, and I'm the Chief Executive. And uh, what I've also told you is that the mountain that I'm most closely affiliated to is called uh, Mount Victoria, and it's the mountain that you see up on the hill here across the harbour. It has quite a distinctive monastery on it in Orange. That's where I live and where my children have been born. And I told you that the river that I'm most closely associated with is the Waikanae River, which is further north up in Wellington, where I spent a lot of time uh, over my, my summer and my childhood. And I told you that I come from the people of the treaty, which means, in my version, what that means is the settlers of New Zealand who came out in the 1840s and 1850s and entered the Treaty of Waitangi, which is a partnership between the Indigenous peoples and the Crown. There's a long history um, involved in that, uh, but that is how I feel my roots are based in New Zealand. Now the reason that we introduce ourselves by talking about our ancestors and where we're from is to find connection. And I have uh, done this, it's called your, your mihi or your pepeha, depending on which version. And I've done that before in various situations and then afterwards people have said to me, oh I didn't know that you grew up in, in Waikanae or I didn't know that your ancestors came from Ireland. And it provides a point of connection so that you can have a conversation with people that you might not otherwise have had. And in Māori culture, or in te ao Māori, uh, a lot of time is spent building those connections and in a meeting like today you might be coming together for an hour and a half to speak about a strategic project you would probably spend a good 70 minutes of that uh, having kai or food and, and coffee very important in Wellington in particular and talking to each other and getting to know each other to build that connection and that sense of mutual respect and trust and it's from that that we build our relationships and then and only after that do we do our business. So Akina, we have a vision, it's a, it's a bold one, uh, and we are boldly working towards a sustainable, prosperous, inclusive Aotearoa New Zealand and world. So we believe that business should be done in such a way that people and the planet can thrive and prosper, prosper within that, and what we are looking for is evidence that we're moving towards a more sustainable, prosperous and inclusive country uh, as a demonstration to the world of what can be done. We're Aotearoa New Zealand's leading impact development organisation. Does that mean anything to anyone? What does that actually mean? So at the heart of what, what Akina does, at the heart of our kaupata or our mahi, our work, our reason for being is impact. And by impact we mean the positive social and environmental change that can come about because of your actions. And that means your actions as an individual, uh, the actions we focus on more so are the actions of business and the actions of government the actions as, as citizens within that. 
So we're working to create a world, an economy and a society where positive social and environmental outcomes are a normal part of doing business. So we believe that every business should understand the impact that they're having, be they a, you know, a corporate finance entity, uh, maybe a Silicon Valley startup, maybe a community-based organisation, uh, many not-for-profits, and importantly the work of government. All of that work should consider the positive social and environmental outcomes that they're having. And we, we work in, and we'll talk about the four different ways that we work to help um, move people along that journey and aspiring to those goals. But a little bit about Akina ourselves. Um, Akina was started in 2008, and at that time we were called the Hikarangi Foundation. And unbeknown to us, because in 2008, 15 years ago, the people who established what is now Akina were perhaps less culturally aware than we are today. We had called ourselves the Hikarangi Foundation. And one of New Zealand's largest iwi came and said, why have you called, her? Why have you called your organisation after our sacred mountain? Um, and I'd spoken to you earlier about the mountain, that means a lot to me. And we realised that that was probably not a cool thing to be doing. So we worked with that iwi, they're called Ngāti Puro, to be gifted a name. So in Māori, in, um, in the Māori worldview, Māori words and names are gifted. So our, our former Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, she had a daughter while she was uh, in, in government. And uh, she was gifted the name of Aroha as her middle name, which means love. So we were gifted the name Akina from an iwi called Ngāti Paro. What does Akina mean? And we, we've worked on this quite recently, actually. So Akina means to energise and to uplift. So we like to work with others to uplift them, to energise them on their journey. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful call to, to bold action. It means to act boldly and, and to be brave. And that permeates through what we do. We have three key values, and I thought I'd share them with you because, um, well actually because I'm really proud of our values and I talk about them quite a lot. Uh, so bold action, as I said, that's, that's reflected in our name. We encourage bold action, we uh, like to amplify bold action when we see it. We try to tell a lot of stories through our social media channels and our, um, and our advocacy work about the great... We, we like to champion what good looks like, and so when we see that, we like to talk about that and encourage bold action right across society and the economy. He tangata, so I like to say that Akina talked about human-centred design before human-centred design was even a thing. So he tangata means the people in Māori, and we put people at the heart of what we do. We do a lot of co-design work. Uh, we don't profess to have the answers when we go into a community or even a corporate, but we work with them to draw out the insights and to work together on what the solutions might look like to some of the world's wicked problems. And ako, and everyone will have heard me say this before, who works at Akina, ako is my favourite value. It means to teach and to learn. And it's that um, signal of reciprocity. So when, when we meet with you, we, we might teach you some things, but we will also have the opportunity to learn some things. And um, that forms a large part of, of how we work and who we are and what we do. So how do we actually work? And Nick will get into this <laughs> in a little bit more detail. Um, we loosely organise, organise ourselves into four different areas. Uh, capability building and impact are really the themes that sit through everything that we do. We're building the capability of entrepreneurs, we're building the capability of government and of corporates to work and think about things in a different way. Um, a lot of our capability building work is working with, with startups and with uh, community based organisations, Māori and Pacific organisations. A lot of it is in Auckland and in the north of New Zealand, helping them to understand the impact that they're having and helping them to tell that story. Now, the reason that that's important is that, and we have seen this reflected in so many different um, ways, there was actually just a story that was shared just yesterday. Um, our Director of Capability, her name's Rochelle, and she was working with a client. And they were a small organisation, she was working with the founder, she was talking about how stressed actually founders are at the moment in, in the current environment, how difficult it is. She really helped them to dig deep into what the, the reason for their business, their why, and the impact of that. And then she saw over the weekend their website got rewritten and reframed. This founder went home and has repositioned the story that they are telling about the work that they are doing. Why is that important? Well, it helps the founder understand where they want to focus, but more importantly, it can help them with that external, um, like I say, storytelling and then attraction of, of funders and support from other sources to help them do more good work and to grow. Uh, 
our impact investment work and, and social procurement work, we talk about these three things as being the levers to increase your impact. Capability building, building your capability, having access to finance that is appropriate for your business, and access to marketplaces or social procurement opportunities. So in 2008, Arkina launched New Zealand's first impact investment fund. We raised private and philanthropic capital, and then we went out to the market and we said, where are some impact-led businesses that are doing cool stuff that's having a positive change in the world, and how can we get on board with that and invest in that? So we have invested in a mental health app. We've invested in a company that is looking at biofuel alternatives for um, engines that are in boats. Uh, we've invested in some carbon technology, some recovery of zinc technology, um, and other such 10 different entities. Uh, one's looking at create, taking seaweed and turning it into fertiliser, which is huge for the New Zealand market. We've invested in them, and the, the, this fund is offering a finance return, so a 15% finance return, as well as positive social and environmental impact. And what we're proving to the New Zealand market is that when you are investing money, if you're a bank, if you're a private capitalised fund, you can actually choose to put your money in more sustainable ways to have financial return, but more importantly, to not do harm to people of the planet by investing in impact-led organisations. In a similar vein, our social procurement work certifies suppliers, so we look at organisations to say, hey, are you an impact-led enterprise? Is, is the re your reason for being, your purpose, the positive change that's coming about because of your business? Yes, okay, great, so we certify them, so they become an Arkina certified supplier, and then we introduce them into corporate supply chains. We have 24 members of our buyer program, the private, uh, I think you payroll is one of our certified social enterprises, and we have uh, corporate buyers, uh, 24 corporate buyers, and we are continually building the capability of those corporate procurement people and organisations to think about spending their procurement dollar or their supply chains in a different way. So we work with the likes of Fonterra, which is New Zealand's largest dairy company, uh, in New Zealand, which is New Zealand's airline, I'm trying to think who else you might know, Westpac, ANZ uh, and others, to help them think about how they're using their procurement spend in a different way. And we talk about the fact that you're spending the same dollar twice, you have to buy your electricity anyway, you're running a payroll service anyway, you might be providing catering to, to your staff and um, corporate customers anyway, and this catering today is provided by a social enterprise called Sweet Release, who are based in Wellington, and they run a pay it forward model, so it's almost like a pay what you feel model, you can go in there and buy your lunch, but you can round it up to the nearest dollar or you can you can add on $10 and then when people come in who, who are not able to, to um, pay for their meals then they're able to be gifted a meal. Uh, so that's our social procurement program. As I said, what's at the heart of this, um, Arkina is the home of impact and we run an impact consulting service offering where we're helping people <coughs> to understand, as I said, the impact of their business, uh, the impact of their social community enterprise and how they can amplify that. The real growth area for this in here and the bit that's actually the, the most exciting is what I call the so what factor. So we've done a lot of work in the measurement space, so great that you understand the impact that you're hoping to achieve. How are you measuring that? What's the evidence of that? How are we going to help you tell that story? We do that through qualitative and quantitative data. So telling telling those impact stories. And Nick's much more expert than that than I am, and he's going to talk to you about that. We've got some great case studies to share with you. So just really briefly, are you familiar with the term social enterprise? Yep, I was just on a call this morning with um, Social Enterprise uh, America and by Social Canada and Ireland and the UK and others. So we try to collaborate quite a lot in the way that we work together. So social enterprises are purpose-driven organisations that trade to deliver social and environmental impact. And this is why social enterprise stole my heart. I really love business, um, I really love social purpose, but the fact that social enterprises, the majority of their revenue comes from trade is I think the, the, the killer instinct here, and that they're not relying on a government grant or handout. Yes, they might need some grant funding to establish themselves the way that Arkina did, but actually they are trading to deliver positive social and environmental impact, and Arkina is a great example of that. Purpose is at their heart. Purpose might be enshrined in their constitution. Ideally, we like to see it that way. Um, profits are reinvested into that purpose. They might be, there might be a buy one, give one model, then profits might be um, redistributed into the purpose in terms of innovation or advocacy work or education work, in the case of Arkina. Um, but purpose is at the heart of, of what they do and why they exist. And just really briefly, 
Um, this is a, a little bit technical, but just to acknowledge that it has been recognised globally that there's a continuum of social enterprises. So at this end, you've got not-for-profits, who are your traditional charities, and I guess we as an economy value that because we recognise that charities have a social good, and therefore they, they are treated differently by our tax system. But their income comes from fundraising and it comes from donations or from philanthropy. And then, at, and then at the other end of the spectrum you have businesses, you can think of banks. Banks would probably say they fit in here, that they have a charitable spend, they have, have programs where they're trying to work with their community. But you have soci socially responsible businesses and by those businesses I think of businesses that might give a proportion of their profits to charity. Well, we don't consider those social enterprises, we consider that a socially responsible business. And then within here, we have different varieties of social enterprises. Charities, this is Akina. Akina is established as a charity, and our, our contracted income is in line with our purpose. You have other enterprises who are working in the community, and the example of that was actually this one here. So this is um, David Latelli. He is a very well-known New Zealander now. Uh, when he first set up his business in 2017, he was doing a community-based gym, so people pay, I think, $10 to come along, $10 a month or a very small amount, and he runs um, gym-based programs to, to help people to get fit. Uh, but his, his impact is around um, increased mental well-being and increased health outcomes, particularly, particularly the reduction of diabetes. And he's an incredible man that's done a lot for Aotearoa New Zealand. And social purpose businesses, which as I say, have their, their purpose at their heart, which and they generally might run on a buy one, give one type model. And I think that was yeah, a couple of just a couple of more points from me. Um, we don't really know how many social enterprises there are in New Zealand. Uh, there was a survey done in 2017, the numbers were released in 2018, so quite quite old. We think there's probably around 6,000, but this, these survey results show 3,500 businesses uh, who were affiliating themselves with social enterprise, contributing um, yeah, at least a billion dollars to our economy. And to recognise that um, the Māori worldview, Te Ao Māori, had a way of doing business and continues to have a way of doing business that puts community and people and the planet at, at the heart. Um, some Māori businesses in New Zealand have 500 year business plans, for example. Uh, it's all about distribution of uh, resources in, in on an inter intergenerational basis. So we hold the land for the benefit of our children who are coming before us and their children. And that is at the heart of, of why we have a business and how we run our business. So Akina feels it's really important to acknowledge that uh, the Māori way of doing business was social enterprise much before this term was, was coined uh, in our more modern economy and society. So that's a really brief overview of everything that Akina does and uh, yeah, the, the model of business that is social enterprise that's at the heart of that. And now, Nick will talk to you in some more detail about some of our work. Cool. Cool. Kia ora koutou, he mihi nui, he mihi mahana, kia koutou katoa, ko Mac Douglas Tauko Ingoa, uh, kei te Akina Foundation, noe mahi ana, noa pune ki ahau. Uh, so my name's Nick, uh, I'm from Wellington, um, originally, yeah, well my kind of background <coughs> is in management consulting, I've been generally based here but I uh, also spend quite a bit of time over in London in the UK. Uh, doing kind of more typical management consulting work um, and we, we, my wife and I came back from London kind of post Brexit but pre-Covid in this funny little bubble period um, and I, I found the Arcata Foundation through my wife who sent me a, a link to the job and said you know this looks like a bit of you, it's kind of consulting but um, applying those skills in a, an environment that helps create positive impact and the kind of rest is history from there really. Um, I think what might surprise you to know is that you know with all the, the stuff that Nicola covered before, we're a team, I don't know what our head count is at the moment, less than 20. 14. 14. Yeah, and Nicola I think likes to say you know we punch above our weight, which I really think we do mm. in terms of the type of um, you know, the, the vast, the breadth of the work that we cover and the amount of organisations that we're working with. Um, my 
My parents run a little jewellery shop just down the road called the Village Goldsmith. If you do a walk around town, make sure you pop in. And <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> the reason the, oh, hey, there you go. Yeah. the reason I mention that is because you know, with consulting work, my parents always ask me, so what exactly do you do? And it's sometimes quite hard to put a um, you know, to kind of encapsulate that, but having, you know, told them about the work that Arkina does, um, Mum went to me a few a month, a few months ago. We want to increase our impact. And you know, for a, for a local jewellery store, I thought that was, you know, really special. And I think kind of starts to show how, um, you know, businesses are wanting to use the, their levers to create positive change for people. Um, and they, you know, mum wanted to explore that and I said, look, well, you know, you're actually creating a lot of economic impact. How many people have you employed over the last 30 years? And you really look after your people as well, because you're creating kind of positive social and economic impact there. And they've made a real concerted effort to source their gold and their gemstones from sustainable sources as well. So they're creating environmental you know, impact through that as well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you a bit about some of the, the work that we do at Akina. Don't, don't worry about reading this if you're up the back. So one of, one of the tools we use with our clients is called creating an impact narrative, which is kind of a, a top level view of their impact story. So I'll read through our impact narrative and it's a really kind of simple structure that encapsulates why we do what we do. So, like Nicola said, uh, because our vision is for a sustainable, prosperous and inclusive Aotearoa New Zealand, uh, we believe that every organisation has the power and responsibility to create positive impact. So we build capability of organisations to increase their positive impact and we showcase that, that positive impact to stakeholders as well. And that leads to more organisations taking action to increase their positive impact uh, and impact enterprises getting the support that they need to grow. So what does that contribute to? Positive impact and environmental impact being put at the heart of how we do business. And another kind of really common tool that we use at, at Arkena um, is called an impact model. This is what we do to help kind of clients understand how their activities create positive change and then what those changes contribute to at a broader kind of system level. Um, Again, a little bit technical, but at a broad level, kind of Nicola's covered it off already, and I'll talk through a bit more detail later. But the two kind of, I suppose, work streams within Arkina is our advocacy work, so telling the stories of positive impact out in the ecosystem, and then building the capability of organisations to increase their impact. And we do that through kind of three key work streams. We help organisations to run well, which is our consulting services, so giving organisations the tools and models and a plan to achieve their impact goals, helping organisations to invest well, um, and then helping organisations to you know, use their supply chains and to buy well, to work with suppliers who create positive change. And in turn, that kind of steps through you know, medium and long term outcomes and shows how the work we do uh, contributes to putting impact at the heart of how we do business. So, yeah, Nicholas talked a little bit about it. Impact investment already, but this is essentially um, investment that creates a positive social, cultural, or environmental outcome along with a, a return on investment. And we've seen a, a massive um, acceleration and growth of the impact investment market, not just here, but globally as well. I think ENG, ESG investing is one of the fastest growing investment classes, which is really cool. Uh, so part of what we do in our impact investment program, we run an investment readiness program uh, for impact-led suppliers. Um, it's funded through a number of large corporates and philanthropics, and Arkina helps to uh, distribute grants to organisations who are, are doing great things uh, to help them kind of upskill or build the necessary capability so that they can grow and go on to attract further investment. Uh, Arkin is also part of the, the Impact Enterprise Fund, uh, which has uh, raised over $8.7 million over the last 10 years. Um, we yeah, invest in 
and companies kind of at expansion stage um, that are looking to grow um, and yeah the, the internal rate of return target is 15% which is still a really kind of positive um, financial outcome as well for the investors. A couple of examples of the types of organisations that we've invested in uh, grounded packaging, uh, they create compostable packaging and through um, working in our investment programs they've gone on to raise a, a, approximately a million dollars there so their, their impact is a reduction in plastic waste. I think Nicola talked about Nomara, so New Zealand's first kaupapa Māori uh, power company. They have a, a really cool pay it forward model where customers pay a portion of their, their bill for, for vulnerable families and they've only been running for the last couple of years but they've already um, paid for it over, over $100,000 to vulnerable families which is awesome. Leafed Foods, we're doing a little bit more work with, with Leafed Foods at the moment. Um, having originally gone through one of our investment programs, they've gone to raise over 15 million US in investment, which is really cool. Um, they turn uh, rubisco, which is like a leaf, into, um, into, a, into protein products, basically. So a much more sustainable version of different protein powders and products that are out there. Um, so they are kind of, yeah, consulting service. This is um, the part of the business that I've spent the most time in, so I've, I've focused on this. Um, I'll take you through a few case studies there. At the core of what we do in the, in the consulting team is helping organisations to, to manage for impact. Um, and initially that means helping them get clear on what their desired impact is. So looking at their strategy, looking at their problem, at this situation and helping them to figure out you know what's our reason for being what are we contributing towards in terms of impact uh, and then we help them structure what we call an impact model which is the kind of chevrons across the top there connecting your activities um, to the outcomes and then ultimately to the the impact that they want to see in the world so that's all very well having that kind of theory of change there um, what we then work with organisations to do is to collect data around those outcomes and to use that information to drive decision making in the business. They want to know what works, what's actually creating positive change. If it's not working, you know, what can they change to um, you know, better fit with their strategy and, and contribute to um, greater impact. So it, it should in theory go full circle once you get clear on your impact vision and the outcomes that you want to achieve, start collecting that data, analysing it, reporting on it, and then using that to inform decisions in the business. So that's kind of the core of what we do in our consulting service. Doing the mahi, so mahi means work in Te Reo Māori. Um, I'll take you through a couple of case studies where we've worked with um, large government departments um, to look at the impact of their investment funds. Um, I'll talk you through one of our kind of social enterprises that we've been involved in developing called Waka Aranui, which is around enabling uh, what we call just transition to hybrids and electric vehicles for low income families. So the government in New Zealand has a, a plan to help um, shift our population to low carbon forms of transport, but to do it in an equitable way so that, that low income families and whānau aren't, aren't left behind, because obviously these new types of technologies are quite cost prohibitive. Um, and then lastly, a quick case study on one of the community organisations that we're working with. So the first government uh, department that we, well, so one of the government departments that we've been working with are called Kānoa, part of our Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. So Kānoa are responsible for supporting the growth of, of regional economies in New Zealand. I think like a lot of countries we're seeing you know, influx of people into urban areas and regional economies really suffering as a result. So Kānoa's purpose is to help increase investment into the regions. Uh, what we were helping Kānoa to do is to tell a really positive story. So again, mapping out how their investments create impact and we did that by talking to Kānoa but obviously to the types of organisations that they invest in in the regions as well. And essentially just asking them the question, you know, how did Kānoa's investment help you to scale up and what impact could you deliver through that investment? 
which I think I've just covered off. Um, so the outcomes of that, like I said, is, is Kanoa used the measurement framework that we developed for them to um, inform their decision making for future investments, so figuring out what, what, what outcomes and impact are we generating and how could we improve that going forward. Uh, we've just finished a project for the Ministry for the Environment. Um, they've got a range of different community investment funds. It's a, a really cool model whereby you know, government knows that community understand you know, what their local problems are and what their priorities need to be in terms of environmental change. So they have funds where they essentially distribute you know, grant funding to, to community groups to go in, out and do the work themselves and then report back to the government. Uh, so we, we worked with MFE again to develop uh, uh, impact models and measurement frameworks for four different investment funds um, to demonstrate how the funds contributed to, to government's broader strategic goals. And the interesting thing I think about this piece of work and about the, this ministry's priorities is that they previously their model was very kind of grant funding process. We give you the money, you go out and do the work, but it's quite a reliant model, these community groups become reliant on government funding to do what they do. And MFE wanted to work with these organisations to build their capability so that they could become less reliant on government funding going forward and actually generate some of their own revenue. So we worked with MFE to design a financial sustainability assessment framework so that they could look at organisations and go, you know, what's their potential to generate revenue and become a bit less reliant on, on us going forward, which is a much more impactful model and a much more sustainable model. So Waka Aranui, this is my baby. On, on my second day at Akina, I got flown up to Auckland and got told to deliver a workshop with our community partner where we were doing a feasibility study um, around, you know, would, what would make a uh, you know, a low-income family able to engage with a, a leasing scheme to um, get them into a, a low emissions vehicle. So Waka Aranui is a, it's a collaboration between government, corporate, um, partners, philanthropy and community. And as I said, the intention is about designing a, a scheme that can help low-income families access low emissions transportation. Um, so we worked with community partners to design the scheme, we secured impact investment, we secured vehicles through Toyota um, who provide, provided them at a, at a discount as part of their kind of impact strategy. Um, and we launched this about a year ago, there's a, a pilot program now up and running with, with 20 families up in Auckland and the feedback's just been amazing about the difference that um, you know, being able to access a, a safe, low emissions, reliable vehicle because these are often families that um, come from really disadvantaged situations where, where vehicle bill shock, unreliable cars is, is a massive issue for their, their family well-being um, and a big part of our role at the moment now that the scheme's up and running is, is doing the impact measurement and evaluation and, and telling the story about the positive change that these types of schemes uh, can deliver and off the back of this um, we kind of pitched this idea to government as part of their emissions reduction plan and government decided to invest 20 million dollars to scale up these types of schemes. Unfortunately with a few policy changes that's on hold at the moment um, but we've been doing quite a bit of work with them to identify you know, what the opportunities are to do these types of schemes. Um, on a national scale, which is really cool. Uh, and then Big Street Bikers, so this is kind of the other end of the spectrum, working with a, a much smaller community organisation um, to help them tell their impact story and uh, get them into a position where they can go out and raise more capital to scale up what they do. So Big Street Bikers install these, uh, what they call locky docks, in the cities, um, so they're basically e-bike e locking stands where you can charge your bike. That's essentially what big street bikers do. So they make it safer and easier uh, for Kiwis to switch to e-bikes. I'm an e-biker and being in Wellington with the hills it is an absolute game changer, so I've, I've used them many times. 
And I'll just quickly touch on social procurement as well. I think I'm running a wee bit over. Um, and Nicola has talked about our, our social procurement program as well, but it's essentially the, the intentional purchase uh, of products or services which create positive impact. Uh, two kind of sides to the program, so we uh, work with large corporates who want to involve more social enterprises in their supply chain. Currently we've got 13, I think, impact buyers, if this is up to date. Uh, their combined procurement spend is well over $30 billion a year, so the impact of that is potentially huge. Uh, and then we have, as of a few weeks ago, 76 social enterprises on our supplier directory as well. So it's about kind of brokering those relationships, giving small businesses a chance to connect with big corporate buyers and vice versa. So I think that, that is me. I'll come, come back for questions later on, but thank you. Thank you. Um, Morena Katau Katau, um, no Ala Lewis uh, Kotarana o Kotikuna, uh, Kate Noho Ao Ki Te Awa Kairangi, uh, called David Morrison, Toka okay, Hua. Um, so, what I've just shared a little bit before is um, I hail from Scotland originally, um, but I actually live just up the road, about 20 kilometres away, on the um, banks of the, the Hutt River. So, I've been living there for about 20 years. Um, really enjoy being connected to water. Um, and if you spend enough time with me, I'll start talking about surf ski, open um, ocean racing paddling, uh, which is what I do, which is basically a, um, a fully sealed um, ocean racing kayak, which I race around the country with, um, with other crazy people. So, um, you can find me on YouTube, David Morrison Surf Ski. Um, <laughs> but, but what I'm here to talk to you uh, this morning about is uh, it's about thank you payroll. We want to operate in a world where business exists in service of people and planet. Um, but a little bit about who we are. So we're, we're leading experts on payroll, purpose-driven business and business-based generosity. So the goal is that we're not just a payroll company, we want to embed generosity and kindness actually into the DNA of our business. Um, and some of the values work that we've um, just been recently completing, um, really these kind of three core values um, underpin all of our work. So ultimately we want to do good. So good work, good deeds, and there's a whole bunch of um, cool things you can do to do good. Um, so whenever we're working either internally or with our customers, we want our staff to think about how do I do this in a really good way. Um, so it's about quality of work, it's about the impact of that work. Um, we also want to make a better future, so as we're making decisions within the business, we want to think not only about the, the short-term impacts of making a business decision, but also the long-term impacts of that as well. Um, uh, Nicola mentioned before about some of the intergenerational um, kind of um, business plans that um, um, the Māori are putting in place around their, their, their world, um, and so we're starting to think about that kind of stuff as well. But how we make a better future, again, through the work that we do, um, but also from the, the impact that we can deliver. And then finally, with others and for others, really kind of leans into the fact that we're a business, we interact with people, business is all about people, um, and to really succeed, it's about being able to connect, build relationships and work with others. So if we're a small organisation, but if we can create um, a ripple in a pond, we can have a much, much bigger impact. So the idea that we can... Um, influence other people's thinking, um, particularly when um, I talk a little bit about our customer base, if we can start changing the minds and hearts of, of the people that um, buy services through us, uh, then we can have a much, much bigger impact you know, through others. Uh, that's our team. Um, we have uh, three remote staff in um, Auckland, in Tamaki Makaurau. Um, majority of our team are based here in Wellington, uh, and then um, we've got our original office in Dunedin, we've got about seven staff in, in Otapoti, Dunedin. So social um, good has kind of been built into um, the, the business from day one. So back in uh, 2014, um, well, prior to 2014, we set up a charitable trust called the Thank You Charitable Trust, which is like a sister organisation alongside Thank You Payroll. Uh, and a portion of um, revenues from the business went to that trust, uh, and that trust then provided micro-grants um, into communities of need around the country. They gave their first charitable donation in 2014, uh, and in, um, was it around, I think it was around 2017, no, 2020, um, we reached a milestone of over 200 grants um, having been given out. Um, that trust is now changing shape, and I'll talk about that shortly in terms of what we're planning to do. 
couple of numbers. Um, so we're the fourth largest, what's called a um, payroll intermediary. So um, a lot of payroll companies feature effectively are just a, an online payroll calculator. Um, you put in all the, the hours that your staff have worked and, um, and your profiles and it tells you what you need to pay them on a weekly, fortnightly or monthly basis. An intermediary is slightly different in that um, we kind of facilitate the transfer of money to your employees as well. So we make it really simple for small to medium businesses in New Zealand to pay their staff. Um, all they have to do is enter in all their time into our payroll system, we tell them the gross payroll amount they need to pay, they put that into our trust account, um, and then on payday we pay the staff for them. So we kind of take care of that whole financial transaction, they don't have to worry about paying individual staff, um, we kind of take care of all of that. So we've got two offices, 25 full-time equivalent staff. When we moved to being fee charging, um, one of the things that we held on to is that we kept our product free for charities. So we have over 750 charities that um, run payroll through Thank You Payroll. Uh, that accounts for about 13% of our subscription revenue as services in kind. And what that means is about 13% of our revenue is actually gifted to the charity sector. Um, uh, that's a big chunk off our bottom line and it's a big commitment for us. Um, and if you're looking at um, uh, commercial businesses and how you can build an in, um, impact into your business, I think the key thing and key message I have is build it into your business model. Make sure that it's sustainable so that as your business grows and scales, so does your impact. Um, there's a lot of businesses that will do a portion of their profits will go to a, a charity or a portion or, um, to some kind of um, public good. Problem is if that business has a, a kind of a challenging year, so the impact will kind of ebb and flow with that business. But if you can build it into your business model, then you're doing good every time you're transacting business. And I think that's a, a really sustainable way to think about how you can um, you know, create impact over the long time, over the long period. Uh, 7,112 um, customers, so we serve over 7,000 businesses around the country. Um, we pay over 30,000 people a month on um, weekly, fortnightly and monthly payrolls, um, which means we deliver around a million pay slips a month. Um, around the country. So small team, um, we're a relatively small payroll company, but the scale in terms of our reach um, sort of expands quite significantly. And that translates into the last financial year about 1.4 billion in payroll that we processed. So that was actually flowed through um, our systems and our, our banking systems. So we're a small fintech provider, but um, even though we're the, the fourth largest, so we're a relatively kind of mid-sized payroll provider, um, we still process and have quite a big significant impact. It's something I'm really proud of, you know, we, we can do quite a lot with. So what I want to talk a bit about is just some of the, um, the different ways in which, you know, a business like us can, can deliver um, uh, impact. Um, so as I mentioned before, we've got our 700 odd um, charities that get free payroll from us. Uh, we also enable payroll giving, which is a feature that um, uh, all payroll providers in New Zealand can tap into. Um, so if you're a business, um, you can make available to your staff the ability for staff to gift a portion of their salary to, um, uh, to charity. Um, so we facilitate that through our system. Uh, and last year we reached a milestone of over $500,000 gifted through payroll giving. So that wasn't our money, that was those 31,000 employees having gifted over $500,000 um, in payroll giving, um, which again is a, a pretty cool milestone and indicative of the giving nature of our customers' employees. Um, we've also been carbon positive since uh, 2016, so we um, certified, we're one of the, the early adopters of um, carbon measurement uh, of our business, um, and being carbon positive, we offset 120% of um, our emissions. So rather than just having a, an offset program where we, we don't care about what we actually you know, do in terms of flying or, or driving or you know, our waste creation, um, we have an active program to, to drive those figures down uh, and then whatever's left is what we offset at 120%. If you come into our office, we have no rubbish, no rubbish bins, we don't have any printers, um, we're basically a fully paperless office. Um, uh, all staff, when they come and join us, um, get a, a keep cup. So we um, just a really subtle kind of um, things, just encouraging people to think about reducing waste. So if they're going to get a coffee, um, you know they're able to um, just pick up their keep cup and take it with them. Um, we also have um, reusable bowls um, right by our door. So as you're going out for lunch, 
Um, I like to go to a little um, Japanese restaurant and get my katsu chicken, uh, which is fantastic if you're looking for lunch. Um, but what we do is you just grab a bowl, walk down to the local takeaway, um, and they will put the takeaway food in that bowl. Um, so again, we're encouraging our staff to, to minimise single-use um, packaging um, and reduce waste. So there's lots of actions that businesses can take in their day-to-day -day actions that can have an impact as well. In terms of internal actions for businesses, another thing is um, I think a lot about how we can grow the well-being and focus on our staff. So the last year and a half has been a huge program um, in terms of looking at the benefits of how we can create a, a better environment for all of our, uh, our staff. And some of the things that we've brought in place recently, so health insurance is now um, available to all staff, um, some of the teams, so I think we fund Almost all staff have taken up our health insurance option. Several of them have then extended it to their whānau as well. So I think it's because um, they get better pricing with, with um, their families. Um, we fund public transport for our staff. So if you take a bus or a, a train to work, um, we'll fund that. Um, we've just finished a trial for about six months, trialling that with about seven or eight of our staff. That was really successful. Um, and we've now um, basically rolled that out. So anybody that takes public transport to work will pay for it. So the aim is to encourage people to use low carbon or no carbon measures to get to work. Um, our board have recently signed off um, the ability for us to provide um, uh, low interest or no interest loans for e-bikes as well. So if you don't want to take public transport and you want to invest in an e-bike, we'll help fund um, getting that on, um, on track as well. So um, we're still going to work out the policy stuff around that, but that's uh, um, the next thing off the, off the shelf for our team. Uh, and then a lot of, um, one of the big issues with uh, COVID uh, were people um, getting COVID, being sick, um, and then we have a, um, a legal requirement of 10 days sick leave for all of our staff. Um, problem is, if you get COVID, you're out for at least a week, if not longer, um, and then you still have to get through your winter illnesses or, you know, looking after your, your kids, etc. So uh, we extended, um, we created discretionary sick leave um, so that anyone that got COVID um, could take sick leave and not impact their legal sick leave requirement um, so that they wouldn't have to worry about um, their, um, their earnings and you know, having to take annual leave to, to um, recover from sickness. Um, we've now um, increased that 10 days to 20 days, so all staff get 20 days sick leave. Um, we provide five weeks of annual leave as well, so uh, there's actually a, a lot of benefits in terms of being a small company, we can still create a really cool environment that rewards our team to work for us. Um, and that's had some huge impacts in terms of just general well-being of our staff, um, enjoyment of coming to work, um, etc. Uh, and additionally, we also do uh, regular charitable donations. So in addition to what's in our business model, if we have funds sitting alongside, we will also donate to charity as well. So uh, um, we have been, up until recently, donating to the Thank You Charitable Trust. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but recently we had um, a cyclone, um, Cyclone Gabriel, uh, up on the, uh, the east coast of New Zealand, um, caused massive devastation. Um, and while uh, there was some huge fundraising initiatives happening around the country to, to get funds into that area, um, there was some desperate need for immediate money on the ground. Um, so we put, I think it was about $20,000 yeah, $20, um, of free cash that we had um, and gifted to two separate iwi in different parts of those areas. Um, so we just uh, yeah, distract donations to get money on the ground quickly. So there's lots of things that we can do as a business. Thank you.